Good morning. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so, towards the end of this morning's meeting, we'll be filling out our NCD surveys. Uh, so, we'll probably be finishing a little bit early and the CEO will give more of an introduction to what's happening there. But for more of a practical sense, when the service finishes, whenever that is, if you're still in this room, you're helping to set up tables and chairs, or you can disappear and get yourself a coffee and a cold drink. There's cold drinks on the table because it is hot. So stick around to do the survey in the building, but out of this room so we can get tables and chairs in and make it a bit more comfortable and easier to fill out those surveys. This Wednesday here at the Hall, 10.30, Connect, and this week it's Connect with Community. I've been told to say it's a bit like Cameo. If you don't know what either of those are, you'll have to speak to Sandy. But come along at 10.30 on Wednesday, find out, share some fellowship there with each other. And then next Sunday is our YP anniversary, and we're fortunate that it's going to be led by 13 plus, our own young folk here. We also link it up with a YP gift day, uh, so an opportunity to make a contribution towards the YP core and the work that's done with those. Uh, I now have two of these because I lost one. I had to get another one from Nicola. So if you want one and you don't want to ask Nicola, you can come and get one off me. But definitely something we're going to enjoy sharing uh, with the YP next week. The flowers this week are from Blanche for Ian's birthday, so we hope you enjoy those and enjoy your worship. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see you. Here you'll see we have our grandchildren with us uh, this week. An unexpected visit, um, which has uh, sort of caught us out a bit over the weekend. Um, I was, we were in Preston Park yesterday afternoon, met one or two folks from the core um, while we were there and, uh, and just explaining what had gone on. And the comment to me was, oh, just make it up in the morning. Just make it up as you go along. That's what we were told. So, uh, so yeah, let's see if you can tell whether I'm just making it up or whether I have prepared anything for you this morning. Um, we're going to start with uh, that song that you heard the band playing the tune to. Uh, Love divine, all loves excel in joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. We'll stand together and uh, we'll sing the verses through. Thank you.
fantastic hymn of the church that, uh, that invites us to have that special relationship with the Lord. Those uh, beautiful, prayerful uh, words, that lovely request, fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. They're words, aren't they, that speak about us being in communion with God. And that experience of communion is something that we all need. Often for us, there will be special places or situations where we have found that we can retreat to. Take that time to come apart from the hustle and the bustle of our daily lives. Spaces that make God accessible to us or that make it easier for us to get in touch with him. And whether that be inside a building or out amongst God's natural creation, my hope and prayer for each one of you is that you have that special place, that special experience, that experience of communion with God. Of course, we know that God is no more present in one place than any other, don't we? God is in all places. Yet, we persist within our thinking of places of worship as being the house of God. And most often, it's here that we become aware of God's presence. The place where we can find those extra things that we need within our lives that the world so often can't give to us. That purity of love. Extra inspiration. Strength and assurance in God's house, wherever that may be for us, we can find a sense of belonging and the reminder that God knows us, that God loves us, that God cares for us. These are the spaces. These are the places we need most within our lives. And so we're going to sing again. Only by grace can we enter. Only by grace can we stand. Not by our human endeavour, but by the blood of the Lamb. Because it's Jesus. It's Jesus who has made it possible for us to come to the Lord. Into your presence you draw us, and now by your grace we come. We're going to sing this through, thank you.
so we pray. Father, we do indeed thank you that you have brought us safely into this place today. And as we spend this time together, we gladly surrender our lives to you in worship and praise. As we gather, we not only call upon you for our own well-being, but we also remember those who are not with us today. For those who are maybe experiencing ill health, we ask for your healing. We also think of those who are away for some other reason. And we pray that your blessing would be upon those folks. Heavenly Father, we remember those people who will be watching our service during the week at some point. And even though they are not here in this physical space with us, our prayer is that they would also feel as though they have been drawn into your presence and that they may experience your blessing on their lives. And so we invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to be with us, to move freely amongst us. Come dwell in each of our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us, teach us. Inspire us as we learn more about your majestic ways. Father, as we meet now, may we behold your beauty and encounter your grace. And we ask all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. And to close our prayer time, the songsters are going to sing to us. Thank you.
a song from the songsters there that reminded us that communion with the Lord is possible through every aspect and every time within our lives. Um, but now we're going to turn to uh, the first of two scripture readings that we're going to use this morning. And uh, to begin with, we're going to turn to uh, the second book of Samuel, uh, chapter 7. Um, and uh, in a moment, Sandy is going to read verses 8 to 13. Um, but here, in chapter 7 of uh, Samuel, um, it tells us how King David, now living peacefully in Jerusalem, um, how he became concerned about the fact that he was living in a palace, but the Ark of the Covenant was still kept in a tent. And uh, so he had it in his mind that something should be done about that. And so he goes and speaks to the prophet Nathan. And, uh, and Nathan's first um, initial reply to him is, you do what you think is right. But then that night, Nathan, um, in a dream, has a message from God. And God gives him um, words to take back to King David. And this is, uh, this is what um, the Lord has to say to David. Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them so they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build the house in my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So as we, uh, as we look at that story um, from the life of David, we find here one of the most significant events, not just for him, but one of the most critical passages in the whole story of God's relationship with the people of Israel. Uh, King David is settled in his house, his palace in Jerusalem. Um, he's been made king over um, all Judea and Israel. And he's taken Jerusalem um, for his capital and made it the centre of worship by bringing the Ark of the Covenant to that place, um, which also brought assurance to his people that God was there amongst them. <clears throat> but now that David is settled and there is peace, it doesn't seem right to him that he lives in a grand house while the ark of God remains in a tent. And, but as we heard, having spoken with the prophet Nathaniel, a clear message comes back from God that for now, he is not to concern himself with a temple. It's not his first concern. What's most important is, a stop, is, is establishing David and his line um, as God's house. In a Hebrew play on words, God says, I don't want you to build me a house. I'm going to build you a house. It's possibly one of the most crucial theological statements of the Old Testament um, because with it comes a, a, a profound shift from the old covenant that God had established with Moses. Um, the old covenant was conditional 
upon the people upholding their side of the bargain. But here, God promises to never take his steadfast love away from the people again. They may still be chided, they still, they still may be, will need correction, but God will never stop loving them. God is promising to establish the people and to dwell with them forever. The temple, in time, will become the central focus of the worship for the for the, uh, the Israelite nation. But for now, the movable tabernacle is a, a good enough house for God. As through David's line, the Lord promises to establish an ongoing kingdom on earth. I will raise up your off offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And possibly after Isaiah um, 53, <clears throat> maybe one of the clearest um, messianic uh, prophecies of uh, Jesus that we find in the Old Testament. We'll move our thoughts on that a longer bit later, but for now, the YP band are going to play to us. Thank you.
message from the Wipe Band, be still and know that I am God. Uh, we're going to take our offering um, and then we'll move on with the, uh, the second part of our meeting um, as we prepare to, uh, to move to the time when we're going to fill in our NCD questionnaires. Thank you. And our second Bible reading is from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, and starting to read at verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles from birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were, who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we have both access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Amen. You're going to sing? I'm sure I've got a song there somewhere. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, that's what we've just heard about in our scripture reading, isn't it? This cornerstone, this solid ground. Um, we'll stand together and uh, we'll sing the song through. Thank you.
so just as the band prepare to uh, bring us their message uh, for this morning, um, just, to, um, just to say that uh, after the band has played, um, I'm going to share a few more thoughts about the scripture reading that Sandy uh, read to us from Ephesians. Um, and then at the end of those thoughts, there is going to be a music video for us to just listen to. And, um, and at, the, at the end of that music video, um, it will be the time for us to prepare for um, filling out our, our natural church development questionnaires. Um, so that will be opportunity for you to go and get a drink quickly. And um, there'll be some moving as we put a couple of tables up if people need tables to, to lean on to fill in their questionnaires. And then we'll come, or, or we'll just take our places wherever we want to, where we're comfortable to fill those forms in. And when we finish filling those forms, that'll just be time naturally for you to, to just make your way home. Does that sound okay? Good. We'll listen to the message from the band, thank you.
So we heard earlier, didn't we, how uh, God told King David that his descendants would be um, established as his kingdom on earth. Even so, in time, the Jerusalem temple would become the centre of religious focus. However, when we move to the passage from Ephesians, what we see indicates something that would have been um, a seismic shift in understanding of how God dwells with mankind. Although it isn't directly referred to uh, in this text, one of the things to keep in mind is that by the time Ephesians is written, the temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed. That powerful symbol of God's presence and the centre of the people's worship life is gone. In response to this, the writer of Ephesians tells us that God dwells with us in a new way. And that God's house has become wide open. The writer, probably a follower of the Apostle Paul, is directly addressing the Gentile Christians here. Those who would once have been considered pagan without God. And he uses very bleak and stark imagery to describe their former plight. But now, says this writer, now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace and in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is the hostility that um, was between them. It's an all-inclusive household. No one is de disenfranchised. There are no more aliens, strangers or outsiders. Through Christ, both groups now have access in one spirit to the Father. There are, in effect, no more doors or walls on God's house. It's now an open plan experience. But even more than that, God's dwelling place is now no longer a physical structure. It's not a movable tabernacle or a glorious temple. The house of God is now the people of God. <laughs> the community of the faithful. The cornerstone is Christ Jesus. The foundations are the great, great host of witnesses that have gone before us. And we, we are the structure joined together in Christ and continually growing into the dwelling place of God. A note here, please that it's not individual followers of Christ who are referred to as God's house, but the community. We all have our individual relationships to God, but to be Christian means to be part of the body of Christ. A branch growing outwards from the vine. But even when we think about that, that's a far more demanding calling than just to be spiritual on our own. Because now we have to put up with other people, learn to work with them, learn to love them, put up with their quirks and eccentricities and all their annoying habits and traits. We have to accept that we're going to think about things differently have differing opinions about what is most important or the best way to do things. We're accountable to one another for the way we live our lives of faith. And we are to hold each other accountable for our actions and words that may disrupt or harm the community or its members. Isn't this... Isn't this then a mind-boggling but awesome fact? You and I, together with all 
other Christian denominations in our town and beyond are God's holy temple. And my prayer for us is that may that truth inform and shape our interactions, our reaching out with God's love to those in our community, our difficult conversations and occasional disagreements, our times of fellowship, our deepest worship. May we always be mindful that we are God's house and that all are welcome. There are no outsiders or strangers, no aliens. God calls this kaleidoscope of diverse human humanity together and by the sheer grace of God builds us together into his dwelling place. And so today, through the filling in of our natural church development questionnaires, we are saying that we want to be serious about this life that God has called us to as his church. We are saying that we are prepared to understand how healthy we are as a congregation in order that we might be prepared for even greater service moving forward. We heard earlier that the house of God is the place where most often we have access to the Spirit and are able to feel in communion with God. That place where we find renewal, peace, comfort, guidance, inspiration, strength, assurance. May we constantly strive to make our sacred place as holy a place as the most glorious cathedral or grandest mountaintop because the household of God should be the place where we find our deepest sense of belonging, where we discover over and over again that God knows us he cares for us. He loves us. And by the grace of God, may that be so. Be enthroned on the praises 
of your people. Lord, we agree in unity. and mercy Let healing and redemption find searching souls Lord have your way in this house may the peace of God enfold us may the love of God uphold us and may the wisdom of God control us this day and always Amen so as you get your, your drinks and your NCD forms there will be some instructions at the top, please read them they are not complicated, there are 90 questions we want you to think to answer answer each one with a tick